the Lord was really showing me like, Tia, there are a lot of my children who don't have faith in me because their focus is not pleasing me, right? And that is where this scripture began to really speak to me, y'all. Hey y'all, this is Tia Rockwell and I am the creator of Sisters with Purpose Women's Ministry and I'm back with another video. All right, so today I just wanna to talk to you guys about faith, okay? faith because this is something that has been really on my heart lately because I have found myself asking do I have faith on a scale of one to ten like where is my faith at right now in this season and just in my relationship with God and honestly I believe that you know faith is one of those like basics or fundamentals that we should understand to have and to walk in because throughout the bible we see where god is like telling us to have faith and everything is through and by our faith right and so about two weeks ago i was reading um hebrews chapter 11 um that chapter but specifically verse six six is what stood out to me the most and had it really pressed on me i'm going to read it to you guys because i want you all to begin to ask yourself like do you understand faith and do you really have faith okay so in verse six it says now without faith it is impossible to please God since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And when I think about that, like literally God is telling us that we cannot please him without faith, y'all. Like I don't care what we do. If you don't have faith that God exists, then whatever it is that you're doing, it does not matter. And so I was kind of sitting with that um, recently. And one of the things that God began to reveal to me, because I, I have found myself going into this like cycle where I began to question a lot of things like, God, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I, am I going in the right direction? God, you know, and I've even found myself asking for faith, like, God, give me faith. Like, God, I want the gift of faith, right? Because we know that faith is actually a, a, a gift. I'm like, God, you know, if I have faith, if I have enough faith, then I can move and I can accomplish and I can see the result of things that I want to do, you know, like in my ministry or in my business. I'm like, God, I need faith so that I can accomplish certain things in my life. And I have found myself asking for faith and praying this kind of prayer for a very long time. And then recently the Lord began to reveal to me like, Tia, you're asking for faith, but you're asking for faith in things. You're not asking for faith in me. I need for you to put your faith in me, who is the creator of all things. You know, I think that sometimes we feel like we have faith or we have certain, you know, confidence or boldness about a thing. You know, that is what's going to help us to accomplish whatever it is that we're trying to accomplish. And so I was kind of, I guess, in so many words, praying the wrong way. <laughs> and I have to be honest with myself about it. And so that is when God brought me to the scripture. He's like, you cannot please me if you don't have faith in me, right? You have to have faith in the one who exists, the one who have created all things. And even in this uh, same chapter in verse three, it tells us that by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So that what is seen was made by things unseen, right? This whole time, I'm like, I have not really had faith in God. I've been having faith, trying to put my faith in the things that I want to see produce, in the things that I want to 
walk in and to accomplish. And the Lord was just revealing to me that when we put our faith in the things that we see and that we want to accomplish, we don't truly understand that the that those things are created by God. So what is faith? Okay, like let's just talk about that. And I love terms and I love giving definitions and things like that. So of course I'm going to, you know, give you guys the definition of faith. All right. So in chapter 11 of Hebrews, it already tells us what faith is, right? It tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And we can see that in the King James Version. But then also in the Christian um, Bible standard, it tells it tells us that faith is also the reality of what is hoped for and the proof of what is not seen. But I want to also give you guys some more definitions so we can kind of reel it in on what faith is. OK, faith is also confidence based on past experiences that God's new and fresh surprises will be ours. I really love this definition because I think that so many times we forget that in our past situations and circumstances that we have gone through, that God showed up for us, right? And God showing up for us in the last situation or the things that we have gone through should really be that endurance and that motivation and really that faith in him to know that when we go through something else, that God is going to be there, that God is going to show up again and again and again. And so many times we forget that our last situation worked out and it was nothing but God. And when we go through something else again, it's like we just we forget and we start to worry, worry, we start to doubt, we start to become anxious and have these fears. And, well, I don't know how, you know, I don't know how it's going to look. I don't know how it's going to work out. And it's because we can't see it working out. We can't see, you know, how it's going to work itself out. But that's literally what the Bible tells us that faith is. Faith is having the confidence in the things that we hope for but we cannot see. And in Romans uh, chapter eight, verse uh, 25 and 26, it literally tells us that, um, that we should, that, that hoping for something that you can see is not hope. It's only until we can't see a thing that we hope for it and we eagerly wait for it with patience. And it's also building our faith because faith is, knowing and believing that God exists. And if we believe and know that God exists and we know that he is the creator of all things, literally things that are seen and unseen, that is what we should put our faith in, right? And I was just like, what have I been doing with my life? All right, so faith is also the conviction of truth of anything. It is also belief. Faith is conviction that God exists. He's a creator and he's a ruler of all things. Like I said, faith is trust, y'all. It is the character of one who can be relied on. And if we say we believe that God is God and he exists, then we know that we can depend on him, that God will come through, that whatever we want to accomplish, whatever it is that we want to see you know, fruit in and produce and see an impact, we should be putting our faith in God, the one who will make things happen, the one who will bless us, the one who will give us everything that we need to accomplish a thing, right? Faith is also assurance, it's fidelity, it's persuasion. And the last thing is faith is trusting that God is who he says that he is, right? And so this is why I wanted to talk about faith because when the Bible says that we cannot please God without faith, that lets us know that our main focus should be pleasing God in all things. That even if we want to 
start a business or you know walk in ministry and do all of these these extra things that we get to do right that within that we should be asking god god i want to have faith in you so that i can please you in this business so i can please you in my ministry and in my gift and in my career or whatever it is that you are operating in your faith should be in god it shouldn't be in your job it shouldn't be in your ministry it shouldn't be in your business right when we allow for ourselves to put faith in those things and the things that we see in these physical things, it is so easy for us to now have this mindset that we are the ones who did it, that we put, you know, that we put forth the work and the effort to do it. And here's the thing, because in James, it does tell us that faith without works is dead. So we do know that there is a part where we have faith but then there is a part where we have to put in action, right? But today I want us to understand that if we don't have faith in God, we cannot please him. And for so long I was praying and I was asking God for faith, but I had this focus and this mindset that I wanted faith in my business. That Lord, if I have faith that I can produce and walk and you know start this business, then I will see the fruit of it. See, my mind and my thoughts of how I was thinking was all wrong, right? And that's what I want us to understand today. And the Lord was really showing me like, Tia, there are a lot of my children who don't have faith in me because their focus is not pleasing me, right? And that is where this scripture began to really speak to me, y'all. Really Another thing that the Lord was showing me about faith is, is how we receive Jesus Christ. It's how we receive salvation. It's how we came into relationship with him. In the book of Ephesians, it says that we are saved by grace through faith. So at some point in your life, you had faith. You were convinced you have the belief that God exists and that you wanted to come into Christ, into salvation with him. And so many times I think that we just really think about faith in the perspective of wanting to accomplish something, you know, wanting to um, make an impact or wanting to start something, right? It's like, I need faith in that so that I can do it. But in Hebrews chapter 11, it shows us examples of men in the Bible that they were known by their faith. When God told them to do something, they immediately obeyed, right? Because of their faith in God, not in the thing that he was calling them to do. They had faith in God that he exists. They had faith in God that his promises will come to pass. They had faith in God that whatever he says is for my good. And here's what blew me about this chapter in Hebrews is it tells us that these men who are known by their faith, they, they never even received the promise, right? Let's read it. Let's go to it. It literally tells us, it says in Hebrews chapter 11, um, it says, they all died in faith, although they had not, had not received the things that were promised, but they saw them from a distance, greeted them and confessed that they were foreigners and temporary residents on the earth. See, these were people, they had faith in God and their focus was going to heaven. That was their focus. That's why they had faith, because they understood that in the end, that what they were going to receive was way more greater or way greater than what they could receive here on earth. <laughs> that is so good. What if we never receive the reward here on earth? What if our reward is only in heaven? Right? Where is your faith at? Do you have faith? On a scale of one to 10, where is your faith at today? Is your faith in the creator and not the creations, right? Is your faith really in God? 
And the thing that God wants us to understand is he wants us to have faith in the things that we cannot see. God will prove himself to us, but God really wants us to have faith that no matter what, we believe that he exists, that he doesn't have to continue to give us confirmation and confirmation and show us who he is and what he can do and what he has promised us, right? And here's a great example. Over in the book of John, we're going to go to it. In the book of John, chapter 20, so good. Chapter 20, it tells us about Thomas, the disciple, right? And it tells us that Thomas, he basically said that in order for him to believe, he needed to see it. He needed for Jesus to prove himself to him. All right. And this is what Thomas said. Starting in verse 24, it says, but Thomas, one of the 12 was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were telling him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, if I don't see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my fingers into the mark of the nails and put my hand into his side, I would never believe. He, he's telling them this, that I need to see proof. I need to see if God is real, right? And we just read what faith is. Faith is believing that God exists, even when we can't see it, right? It's having this hope in the things that we cannot see. But then here's the thing about Jesus. It says a week later, his disciples were indoors again and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood, stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your fingers here and look at my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Don't be faithless, but believe. Thomas responded to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. But this is what Jesus says. And this is what I want to remind us today. Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet they believe. See, this faith walk is not even about the things that we accomplish here on earth. This faith walk is really getting us closer and closer to our Savior, Jesus Christ. This faith walk is all about our eternal life. Because in order for us to get to heaven, we have to believe that Jesus exists, that he is the son of God, right? This faith walk is all about the homeland. We're going somewhere, right? But if our main focus is just here on earth and what I can do here on earth, like that's literally where you're stopping it. But this faith walk is a journey because it's getting us closer and closer to our heavenly father. So good. Another example that I want to give us in Hebrews chapter 11, we see that um, this chapter, it tells us about Abel. It tells us about Enoch, right? And one thing that I want us to understand is that each person that is an example here in this chapter, because of their faith, they all were different. They all had different situations, but they had one thing in common, and that was their faith. And when we see in verse six that God is telling us that we cannot please him without faith, Enoch was a perfect example of this because it says that he was one who was approved by God and he pleased God. And because he pleased God, it tells us that he went on to heaven, that God just pretty much snatched him up and he went to be with God, right? And so when the Bible is telling us that it is impossible to please God, this is what I want us to understand about the word impossible. Impossible means without strength. It means impotent. It means powerless. Okay. It means weak, unable, disabled, 
can't be done. That's what impossible means. So anytime we allow for ourselves to not walk in faith, to not trust in God, to not remember that God exists, what we're saying is who he is is impossible. What he do or can do is impossible. God is weak. That's what we're saying when we don't have faith in him. We're saying that he is we're saying that he's powerless when we don't have faith in him. And that's not true. It's not true. So in other words, we must believe God. Okay? Believing God is the beginning of our walk. The last thing I want us to understand here is and I pray that this is what boosts our faith in God. Because in James chapter 2, verse 19 and 20, it tells us that even demons believe. Even demons believe that much. Demons believe and know that God exists. They believe God, <laughs> right? So if demons believe that much that God exists, how much more should we believe and have faith in him? How much more should we be striving each and every day to please God? Okay? God is there and will reveal himself to the seeking heart. Listen, it's really not difficult to please God. And I'm telling myself this. <laughs> I'm telling myself this because I'm really on this journey of trying to really build and strengthen my faith. And when I'm looking at the Bible, it's really not difficult to please God unless we don't have faith, okay? Um, and so my prayer is that you begin to really ask yourself, where is my faith at in this season? Where is my faith at right now in my walk with Christ? Am I putting my faith in the world? Am I putting my faith in the things that I want to see come to pass? Or am I putting my faith in the creator, the one who can make things come to pass? Okay, so that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I pray that you were blessed by this word and you are really encouraged, okay? Because we're all on our walk <laughs> trying to continue in our faith. So anyway, don't forget to like, share, comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel for more videos. And I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.